Shadows are getting shorter. I don't know. The days are getting longer. No, the days are getting shorter. We've... What is your problem? <laughs> no, they are. The days are getting longer. We've passed the shortest day of the year. They're getting longer now. Oh wait, yes. Sorry. What is my problem? I... <laughs> this intro sucks. Let's do it over. <laughs> I got this. It's now. Let it go. It's fine. We don't. We don't do multiple takes. I know. We're done. That's not the who we are. <laughs> um, days They're are getting longer, that. which means the shadows are getting. They have to be getting something. Shorter, longer. Yes, the shadows, the shadows are, are getting there. something. Um, and uh, and we're rapidly uh, pulling away from the uh, cold darkness of winter. At least I am. The rest of you, do what you want to do. Happy to see you. My new jazz podcast. With your friends, Chris, Allison, Gary. This is episode two. To episode two of twenty twenty. <laughs> Which, if you're keeping it's not track in episode two, which if you're keeping track in binary, it's episode one zero zero one 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 zero, which I know all of you are keeping track in binary. I don't even know yep. if I can anymore. Yeah, I've I've lost. Uh, if I didn't have, if I didn't, if I didn't keep track of like the current the current episode number and like the next episode numbers, I would not know. Like I can only I can add one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know that I would be able to calculate. You can carry the one. Yeah. yeah. I wish I was learning from it, but I'm not. <laughs> the binary like does. A <laughs> it's a lot of ones and zeros. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Buddha. Okay. Well, <sighs> I. So it's been a year, right? No, it's been a week. We have an episode that. Well, That's quite the week. year. <laughs> oh. Since yes. we last met, yes. It's been a year, yes. <clears throat> we won't talk about that. We don't talk about current events in this show. We Since avoid when? we avoid current events as much as possible. Th to that end, I have been avoiding um, the the Twitter and uh, and news. And your life has been much happier as a result. Not really, no, no. But that's just because personal shit's happened. So that's, it, you know, it's it's equaled out. It would I mean, be sadder were I following the news and Twitter. Yeah, you're also missing out on the quality content that I put out on my Twitter. That has been quality content lately. Yeah, I, no. <laughs> it's so random. Is it? Yeah. No, it's so random. You're not missing out on anything. No, it's good. That's pretty much what Twitter's random, for, though, right? It's the random like, that I'm here for. You know, it's like yeah. the random ramblings of tarot and the importance of cheese and yeah. Just, Ooh, there's, I like there's, cheese. There's nothing good in there. Cheese. Everything good in there. <laughs> Um, it's five dollars sushi on Wednesdays at my local grocer. So Ron and the kids grocery are there. Grocery store sushi like, though. But in Florida, well, it might be different. Uh, nope, maybe. still pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I mean, I worked at a grocery <laughs> store and I had grocery store sushi, and I would, say, and I worked at Whole Foods and had a uh, Whole Foods. Did I? I don't know. I did work. I mean, I did work at Whole Foods. I wasn't questioning that. Uh, but I've worked at grocery stores and I've had grocery store sushi as a result, and it's, it's. I mean. It's okay so this on a lunch one, break, I guess, I guess, and then yeah, that's what it is. This, I mean, a guy comes in like pops in the counter and rolls it and puts it out there. Like it's not like it's brought in by truck, but it's also not the best I've ever had. It's fine. Five it's dollars. Sitting there, it's sitting there all day, which I think is the problem. Like if you if you get it when it's fresh, it's good. But if you get it like at the end of the day, you're... well, you may note that I said that it was it's five dollars on Wednesday, which means it was purchased yesterday. So I had it in the fridge until today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had it for lunch. It was good. I, was, I mean, it's better than like a tuna sandwich or peanut butter and honey sandwich or. Nothing I would like to say honey sandwich. that yesterday I had a dream and a craving for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I made that dream mm. happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Twenty twenty is not so way bad. To go, take, I am take, achieving goals. <laughs> take, taking your life by the horns. I don't know what that. I it guess. was great. So, <laughs> it refers to like wrangling bowls or something. So this is interesting. I, I pff, this is dumb. It's interesting nonetheless. I'm facing east and my face because of the sun. Oh, no, wait. Shit, that doesn't tell me anything. The sun's over there. Never mind. Proceed. It's not interesting at all. I'm facing south. <laughs> that was what I was going to say is 
the sun is hitting my, this side of my face, but it's also hitting the opposite side of Allison's face. But I actually don't know what direction she's facing because the window could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. You're facing south, which means maybe, you're... Wait. Maybe there isn't even a window. Yeah, you're, the, you're like that way. Maybe it's just uh, my sad lamp. Yeah, it could be. And probably is, actually. No, I think <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's natural it. light. <laughs> it's a window. Like I'm just living in darkness. My sad That's lamp is actually over snow. here somewhere. Yes, actually. I was gonna, I was but, gonna do that without looking, and then I was like, "Watch me knock this over." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is. and then you have this like fifty dollars lamp that's broken. Yeah, I'm like the true meaning of the sad lamp. <laughs> yeah, right. The sad, sad lamp. <laughs> also wearing, also wearing socks and have to navigate the broken glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's exactly if it, how if it matters, I'm facing west. Ish. So That's how so are you even no, I'm, facing east. I'm facing east. This is east. That's east. That's east right there. Okay, that makes sense. I was gonna say, Chris, if you're facing west, then our then I'm are facing in each Australia. other. And I feel like we need to turn around and face each other for this to work. <laughs> really, my back is facing Chris though. So that seems about right for this podcast too. Yeah. <laughs> it's legit. It's like oh, <laughs> Hey, have you all seen that that gif of Fry Mooney, Chris, on Twitter? Um, I've only seen it when you send it to me on Twitter. Not lately. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been yeah. more than a year. Yeah. Has it? Have you? Do you keep track of of like <laughs> when and the frequency of of your fry mooning gifts? I'm surprised that's. That. I'm surprised that's not a bot. That's been seriously <laughs> like fry mooning Chris the bot. <laughs> Every time Chris posts. Every, every random number between like one and fifty. If it's if it's that day, then there's a Fry Moon Chris post. I, I once worked at a, a web agency, as you all did, and um, we were rebuilding the company site, and I was tasked with working on the project, but there was actually nothing for me to do. Hmm. So there were no tickets, but I had like a day to work on the project. Like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, well, I don't know. So I decided that I would, um, uh, one of the concepts they had was a logo train. And so I spent the day adding um, mouse over effects to the logos Another to logo make train, train sounds. Except uh, unless you were the um, social media person who also used the website. And if you were to roll over the logo train as a social media person, one time in a hundred, it would play a fart sound instead of a train <laughs> sound. <laughs> and as far as I know, that, still looks, that also that site also had a flushing sound and a toilet emoji to flush the cache. That I remember. Uh, and, uh, and that's what I did to help with the site <laughs> like come on here's some busy work i mean so is the logo does does logo train make the train sound like when anybody hovers over it it was only in the admin side that it make the train sound it would have been fun if i did it in the front end but i yeah. didn't um and there were some easter eggs that we had built into it um yeah this was like i don't know what version it was and i'm sure that that version has gone now i think it's gone now um yeah. So the best part was I was like, I was, I was at my local meetup and I was sitting in the back row as you do when you're, you know, not interested in the topic, but feel that need to be there. So I was working on this and I finally got the effect to work. So I, suddenly my laptop is blaring a train sound while someone else is giving their presentation. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. The internet's cool. We should keep it. I use the, uh, for when I've been teaching uh, HTML, CSS and using perspective and different transform effects and my students are always like when will we ever need to use this and i'm like if you want an easter egg for a card to flip <laughs> and i'm like or any sort of game system you'll end up having to know this <laughs> just know that it exists you don't need to know yeah like yeah just know that it's out there there's a perspective thing so i, I took west boss's css grid class last week this is way web debbie this episode um, I took uh, West Boss's uh, CSS Grid class last week because I had nothing better to do really. Um, and there's a uh, there's an effect that he does on in one of his like demos where he uses uh, a perspective thing to show and hide a, a nav menu on mobile. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a good use. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's sort of like so th so uh, yeah so the menu will kind of appear and disappear and it sort of like folds back and disappears it's pretty neat i should redo that grid course i feel like i knew enough to be dangerous but now i feel like my comprehension of just the syntax of things i would just get get it more 
I think you might have changed. <laughs> I'm so too. in a flex box world that I'm yeah. like. So. Yeah, I, I, I wish for a flex box version of that class because I would like to know like the difference and like. Doesn't he? He has a flex box one, doesn't he? Does he? Does I he, think it's I called mean, What the Flex Box. What the Flex Box. This is just turning into a big ad for West Box. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll have to look. <laughs> Okay, do you class. find you learn best um, using like a multi-course video thing like that with like the in conjunction like he I think in conjunction he always has like a, a spot to type right so you can try it yourself either no, that I or know. I think he has like a bundle of files that you can yeah. download and play oh around. that's right you have a repo yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah that's what right. the flex box it is indeed do you, so do you find you you learn best that way or no do you find absolutely not um, okay. however uh, I, I it's do the only it. way people will provide information this day. Right. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to learn by doing. It's. Yeah. I, okay, don't I, feel, like... I feel better now that you said that. I it... felt like I was like weird, not able to understand these videos. I yeah, watched them. No, go... it's, it's totally not my learning style. Uh, my learning style is doing. And so I will try to do it along with him when he's like going through and doing the code. I'll do it with him. And I feel like that kind of sort of solidifies things. And then I can pause it and I can play with it a little bit if I need, if I want to. But. I do feel like I, I, I left that class with a fairly good understanding of, of CSS grid. Um, so yeah, that's legit. My solution is generally like, oh, here's a working version of something kind of similar. Let's break it. <laughs> <laughs> what does this do? Yeah. I had to do that recently with a React thing, and I was pleasantly surprised at how effective I was able to get in there and move stuff around, which says a lot more about React than it does about Gary. React is very verbose, meaning really easy to figure out how to do things. Or it, your understanding of JavaScript is such that you can just apply those things to any framework. Wouldn't that be cool if that were true? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. That's the dream. Yeah. yeah. I, also, I also think Grid is fun to learn because they, on the creation end of it, have thought it out in a way that, for me at least, previous things like Flexbox had components that were a bit half-baked and so mm. css grid they've kind of taken the best of flexbox and then like fixed what and then so then when they rolled it out it like was rolled out in completion rather than like well there's some weird things that you have to know <laughs> thank you allison i now have what the flexbox in my course catalog you're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate all the I was things. actually, I was actually like, I left that course and I was like, I wish there was more stuff about Flexbox so I could like do that too. Yeah. Oh, Flexbox. So good. <laughs> Remember when we just had to float things? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and yeah, and I've been doing that like even like as recently as like several months ago. So like I like now can use this as an excuse to not do those horrible to things. To not float. Yeah. Not float. My goal in life is to not float. My Wait, goal. <laughs> float, what did I miss? In what sense? In every sense. In every sense. All That's senses. the goal. Feet firmly attached to the ground. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Should I even introduce a topic this week? I don't yes. even yep. know. Yes, yeah. okay. absolutely. So the topic this week is confabulation. Confabulation. Fab, short for fabricate. I think confabulate is to make up a lie. Or are you confabulating? <laughs> most, most assuredly. <laughs> uh, it's this entire show. <laughs> uh, confabulation. Uh, I mean, that's a legit, probably, definition, but I, I'm going to go with a confabulation is when you have a lot of something. It's like a description of quantity. It's like when you, <laughs> when it's too many things to count, you just have a confabulation of stuff. Like I've definitely like, heard this word before. Like after Christmas, we have a confabulation of crap mm. that we need to clean up. <laughs> I do think that I've heard this word before too, and I think that I, I probably should know uh, what it is, but I... Other I mean, than we've all we've all heard a lot of words before. Yeah, and, and like <laughs> and I feel like I feel like just going with the idea that it that it means something that is not true feels too yeah. much like it's coming from like the word fabrication. Um and I think it is. That may That's, that means that it is in my mind wrong. Well it's it's clearly not fabulous as the root word. 
because it's too it's wrong because it's too easy yeah like, too straightforward yeah do you well, think that, i purposefully try to trick you <laughs> uh, maybe i'm like no no this one's too easy <laughs> well now i'm not even sure now i'm floating <laughs> apparently <laughs> Well, obviously, you need to take West Boss's uh, CSS grid course, and then you will mm. uh, stop floating. And then it's mm. just like columns, rows, templates. Is that what you mean by floating? Like literally, like floating elements? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, floating is bad. Oh. Is unless, unless, I mean, there's like one use case where you're like, yeah, you float. It would be a modal, right? Modal? Maybe there's two use cases. I was just like, if you want text to wrap around an image, you float. That's like the reason for floats. Couldn't you flexbox that? Well, you <laughs> you can do anything with flexbox. But for a true you, you wrap, or function. but now you can do like CSS shapes with wrapping. Anyway, this is getting really dumb. That's too nuts. That's yeah. that's what's way too much for me. But like, if you had like a really cool anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic, though. I mean, like the the tool set for in browser presentation continues to get. I mean, just the toolkit just continues to grow. It's fantastic. It's a confabulation of tools. One might say. So many, just so fabulous. That doesn't make sense. That no, <laughs> nope. It totally <laughs> makes sense. It's a confabulation. No, <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> uh. hmm. I saw. Um, Speaking of not doing it, uh, I saw a uh, a clip last night. Um, I think it was in a Seth Meyers thing um, of George W. Bush, um, the where he tried to open the locked door and then like got confused and couldn't open the door and he could continue to try to open the door. And then, and <clears throat> I remembered how dumb he was uh, when he was in office. But that's not the the George Bush that said that uh, not going to do it. That was uh, his senior but that just reminded me of that um and really was it wasn't it wasn't george bush senior that said it that much anyway it was it was dana carvey pretending to be george bush senior but that's you know an aside. Isn't that the beauty book. of satire though is like now that's what we associate with hw absolutely not gonna do it thousand points a <laughs> lot those are the best impressions yeah i mean i think that i think that uh when in the in the post Trump era, everybody will just think of Donald Trump as Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know that there will be a way to disassociate uh, Donald Trump from Alec Baldwin, pa partially because it's the quantity of content now. Um, it's been like almost every week, almost every week, there's been an Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump for the past three years, and there's still a year to go. So like, and it's only going to get more, especially as we ramp up to the election again. Like it's yeah it's a lot of content <laughs> oh. in canada before there's an election they're only allowed to i don't know promote themselves for a certain amount of weeks beforehand um to keep elections real short and it's really great <laughs> that's that's kind of awesome i think because then you're not like spending the entire year or like four years just like tooting your own horn and like advertising yeah how does that work so like oh, sorry, I was going to say their election process works a little differently because someone can call an election, which is what often happens. So they'll be like, okay, there's going to be an election. And then it happens within like a month or so. Um, oh. So often there's not enough time for people to really go rampant anyway. There's term limits though, right? Like at, at, at some point in the future, Justin Trudeau will be reach the end of his term <laughs> and then there will be by necessity an election. I don't know if there are, actually. That's a good question. I think most people have bowed out, but I guess there must be a limit. Actually, I don't know if that's true, because I feel like I was talking to someone, and we, I was like, oh, well, we have a term limit, and they were like, that's weird. Um, well, Chris, the, the part you're missing is that it's a civilized society, Canada, <laughs> so that people will make the interest, make decisions in the best interests of the entire populace, this, this not is just true. themselves. I, so I, I, will, I, will, I will grant that for Canada. But I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that much of Canada's uh, uh, government system is modeled after the UK's government system, which is not a civilized society. Have you seen Parliament? <laughs> Have you watched videos of Parliament? It's gotten a bit nice. Not. This is not civilized. Um, 
I love that we said we don't discuss politics. <laughs> and, and we don't discuss so, current events. Yeah. I live in a swing state, um, uh, which sucks um, because I don't watch yes, very much. Does it much. suck more or less than living in a state that is like diametrically the opposite of your political beliefs? Yeah, probably less, but I'm going to complain anyway. Um, as I sit on my porch in the middle of January with like, you know, thousand dollars of computing power sitting in my lap. Yeah, that's that's totally like, a fair that's yeah, totally a fair so, complaint. We've got snow outside. Yeah. It's it's you know thirty yeah. degrees and it's a red state. Uh, right. Totally fair for you to complain, Gary. Go on. Oh no, I was just saying like I wanted I wanted to, to, to lay set the groundwork to understand how, how useless this complaint is before I put it out there. So let me put it out there. Um, <laughs> I don't watch a lot of television. Like you know it's it's we stream stuff or we just don't watch TV. But I am interested in um, in football and so this past weekend in football was um, the playoffs, which meant I had to watch like live television. Uh, and holy cow, um, a lot of commercial breaks in football. I was not surprised about that. I was surprised at um, how much uh, every commercial break uh, was filled with uh, people campaigning for whatever they're running for. So that was it. Can't wait for my mailbox to be full of stuff. Little known fact, I used to think it was called a swing state because it just looked kind of like a swinging thing geographically on the map when I was little. That's why I didn't I mean, make, like other states didn't make sense when they were also referred to as a swing state. Like I just, it, how can Ohio be a swing state? That's ridiculous. I was like, it doesn't really, <laughs> yeah. it's a bit of a reach. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a better definition of swing state than the actual definition of swing state though. I think that was my, my level of whimsy when I was little. Can you hear that jet engine overhead? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. That's a uh, that's a recent addition. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it's it's very high, and about uh, twice a day, for heading from west to east, something flies overhead that does that now. Change the flight patterns, maybe. Uh, no, it uh, it it it's I. No, I I mean maybe, but I I think it's more nefarious than that. I was gonna say I like think, uh like troops movement. Um, I'm thinking more like um, like mapping planes, spy planes. Wow, well, that is nefarious. Because uh, when uh, my parents, uh, when I was uh, probably going into eighth grade, I guess we moved into South San Francisco, and they had just barely signed uh, sort of an ordinance, I guess, in the city to allow uh, SFO, which is basically in South San Francisco, even though it's called the San Francisco International Airport, it's basically in South San Francisco. Um, they had uh, signed an ordinance to allow them to change their flight patterns so they would fly directly above our house, like all their flights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so as so because they were doing this, the, the, the compensation that they gave the residents is the city would go through and pay for like uh, double paint, like new windows for everyone that like soundproof windows, um, which were completely not soundproof, mm -hmm. um, but helped, I guess. But there was a couple months, especially in the first uh, first couple months we were living there where we didn't have, they hadn't come in and changed the windows. And so we had single pane, pane glass and it was um, yeah, pretty, pretty loud. It, it did kind of feel like the airplane was uh, like inside the house. Um, mm -hmm. And uh and then, and then, like you know, I would say like a month, or maybe maybe even just like a week before they installed the windows, you stop noticing it anyway. Um, like you don't even hear them. Just like after living there, like you don't like like my parents, like the the airplane will go overhead now, and and yeah, they don't they don't notice. I hardly notice it when I'm over there. It's interesting that they offered up. I mean, like, it's nice, I guess, the gesture of being like, well, try to fix this and make it better for you, but also... I think people complained. I think people, I think, I think that was the only way that people would sign off on it. Um, yeah. Was because people were like, what? No, there's no way I'm going to approve that. And they're like, well, we'll give you new windows. And like, okay, fine. I guess that's fine. Yeah, if they're going to, if they're going to do stuff on my house, then I guess I'll, I'll, you know. It's interesting what you can get used to as a person, though, because, like, my, the house I grew up in was next to train tracks 
and like mm. it doesn't doesn't phase me at all and like but people would come over and then the train would go by and they just be like oh what's that and you're just like also also lived funny. by it by train <laughs> tracks uh the apartment i lived in with my dad uh prior to that uh actually probably two apartments prior or two residences prior um was like literally down like you could see the train tracks from from the from outside the apartment it was like right there and yeah same thing like train would go by and like for a while like you totally like it freaks you out and shakes everything but like after a while like you don't even hear the signs anything yeah we have a um so there's a couple refineries like uh oil refineries like up the street from where we live and every day at four o'clock they do like a oh. last call sort of like tone like end of day oh, yeah. like alarm thing and oh, and like come get your last glass of oil <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> And, and, and I always like, well, I mean, I guess not always, but you can like, you can hear, and, and it's weird because um, they, they do a tone and then they announce something over the speakers. And, and so all you can hear is. <laughs> and, but then sometimes, sometimes they do that. They also do this, a similar sort of uh, alert when there's a problem. And oh. so, like, if you hear that and you hear the voice at any time other than four o'clock, that means there's like something blew up or something, and like, the, then you start to like worry, like, what is going on? What are they pumping into the air now? That would stress me out. I yeah. I would just start worrying on their behalf and being like, I'm close. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, that's another reason why I want to move to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Not that they don't have oil refineries in Canada. But I know. I was like, gonna say I was just like, we've got our own pipeline issues. Yeah, it's it's fair. <laughs> I think the only thing I've gotten used to is the buzzing power lines behind my house. That see, I I think that would be weird, but at the same time, I'm like, I've gotten used to train tracks. Like, why wouldn't? Yeah, so, it has to be really humid to, for them to buzz audibly to me any longer. Is you... it just like a, a loud cicada? Yeah, no. I was just gonna say cicada. cicada? Cicada, yeah, cicada, cicada. cicada. Let's potato, call the whole potato. thing off. <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna say cicadas uh, because every time I watch any sort of like anime or uh, Asian like TV show, like we've been watching this new uh, Korean drama thing um, on Netflix called Cheese in the Trap, which is bizarre and like <laughs> fascinating um, and really kind of disturbing. Uh, anyway, we we watch these things and and I was noticing. Um, in a recent episode that it, you could hear the cicadas in the background and like like it's the sound that under undertone is the undertone of like every anime and every asian That's thing like whenever they out they're outside it's like all it's omnipresent and i had never noticed it in that show before but like like i've heard it so many times that like i don't even know if it's i don't think it's a real sound i think they add it <laughs> like i don't think they like pick it up on microphones but like there are, there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of material and like um, I don't know that, like, 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 I notice it because we don't have cicadas. But I don't know that other people would notice cicadas, like, living within places where you would hear it all the time. I just like the idea of, like, the person that sources all those sounds, where they're like, all right, go out there, we need this. Oh, right. They're out there I with their microphone. I always wanted to be that person, yes. I always wanted to be that. I feel like it would be, like, the most fascinating thing. I still want to get it. Um, it's like we like need a, a, a creaky forward, door forward. and then footsteps walking away and you're like we did um so when i was in college i took a video production class and we did um a scene from the big lebowski and we had to do our own fully so we did have so i did do a i i did do i recorded the full I, like we had a couple people doing doing the fully and i was like the 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 video editor um so i was recording a lot of the fully um so yeah, we did, we, like, I kind of sort of, I guess, assisted um, with some of that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's well, because fun you stuff. realize there are so many sounds that are, like, added in, I guess, where you're like, oh, no, we need the slurp to be louder, or, like, the, the gravel needs to crunch, or, like. <laughs> yeah, when you watch, when you watch a scene with no sounds, it's really, really weird. <laughs> you're like, boring. <laughs> because there's that scene, so we did the scene where, um, where the dude comes home, and there's the two uh, the two guys that are like waiting for him in his house that like tackle him and like flush his head down the toilet. That scene. Um, uh, so like there's the whole like tackling sound, and then there's a peeing on the carpet sound, and there's like <laughs> there's there's the the plunger sort of sound of the water and the the toilet, and like yeah. 
we had we had to stage a we had to stage a, a toilet bowl for my face to go into. Like, I mean, we had we had the actual toilet where like you know for the behind the head shots, but we had like staged something from underneath where like it looked like my head was like above the toilet, um, and we had to figure out like a way to to make it look like someone was peeing on the carpet without actually, um, or peeing on the rug without actually you know peeing or you know putting uh, getting water or something on a rug. Um, we we filmed it in in uh, a frat house actually. Um, and there was so a real the rug would not have been used. in a place, actually, it turns out. <laughs> it's true, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so confabulation, uh, we have votes for it's, it's a lie, or we have votes for it's just a lot of stuff. Uh, and we have reached yeah. the time where uh, we should determine what it actually is. Okay, well, it has two meanings. Um, one is a lie, and one <laughs> is a lot of stuff. Well, sort of. Anyway, oh. the, first, the first meeting, like how I came across it, is in reference to a conversation. So if someone's confabulating over in a corner, they're like talking and blah, 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 whatever, chatting, gabbing. Um, but then when I was looking it up to be like, oh, is that really what it means? It also means there's a, a psychiatric condition that's basically like a glitch in your memory where you make up a story of like an incorrect memory, but you actually believe it. So it often happens with people with dementia where they'll tell themselves a story and it, like it becomes true, the story because they're kind of embarrassed about like losing a gap of time or something so they'll be like no no i was at the store and like that's why like this chunk of time is gone or whatever um but yeah so i thought that was oh, interesting because wow. i was using it for a conversational thing but that's actually yeah so subtle alterations to bizarre fabrications anyway and that's confabulation well but in conversation it's yeah in everyday you, speech it's a conversation have you ever thought like when we figure out when we find out what the topic is from Allison, like we need like a little audible like hook, you know, like there's like a, a sound we play or like a little like like a Foley effect, you think? <laughs> well, no, because that would be like the in sound support of, you walking of a visual away. <laughs> and it's happening. Like it would be just a, I don't know. Like a ding. Like a light bulb. What's, what sound does a light bulb make? <laughs> Ping. Have you you've both seen the movie Half Baked, right? Yes. Uh, there's some weird Foley decisions in that movie. There's a lot of weird decisions in general in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think part of it is to make it feel like you're high. Well, make it feel. Wait, what? I don't even know if it was that conscious, though. <laughs> you're probably right. It, you're probably that it was just produced by someone that was very high, and that's it. Yeah. I want to give yeah. them credit, but. Also. No, I, you're you're most likely right. You're most likely right. There's a scene where he's feeding the horse popcorn, and there's a really weird click that just always. I mean, I've probably seen the movie four times in my life, so it's not like I watch it religiously. But no, I have not watched Half Baked. Half -baked. It, I mean, eh, I wouldn't go out of my way. That's a good description. I feel like if you didn't see it, if you didn't see it when you were a youth. <laughs> don't don't worry about it if you've gotten yeah. this far <laughs> yeah yeah you can i mean if you have nothing better to do but i think you can find better things to do chris i believe in you i believe in you <laughs> maybe are there allison maybe questions left flex box course uh yeah there are allison okay because i was banking on that i didn't bring anything else to the table <laughs> yeah no that's cool i can ask questions <laughs> <laughs> well, what are your questions gary you can submit questions, Gary. That's true. Anyone can submit questions. You just go to the website at binaryjazz.us and fill out the form at the bottom of the page or on the contact page. You can also contact us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Wow. That was and in fact, we, we prefer like listeners. We prefer listener questions over Allison questions. It's true. The Allison questions are fun though. But what are the Gary questions? I want to hear the Gary questions. Yeah, me too. Um, all right. So, um, in your refrigerator, right? Uh, we tend to have a lot of condiments in the door, of the refrigerator, one shelf specifically. When you run out of space on that shelf, do the condiments move to a, a non-door shelf or do you force yourself to get rid of like the oldest one that you do not use? I don't get rid of stuff. I mean, if we, if we decide that we're never going to eat this thing ever again, uh, then we might toss it, but most of the time it just goes to the next available door space. And if there is no available door spaces, it just goes somewhere in the fridge and probably gets shoved to the back. Yeah. 
but I usually take that as a sign that I need to clean out the door of the fridge. Um, so we'll kind of do a reevaluation because oftentimes it's like we've been gifted like a homemade jam or something and yeah. we opened it and ate half of it and then have forgotten about it behind the hot sauces. And, but that's yeah. not a specific example I'm bringing up for any particular reason. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what, what is, you should do to solve that problem is to combine the jam with the hot sauces. Hot sauce, yeah, and then it should be spicy jam, and then you could have that on I don't know something. Spicy cheese, what, probably. Yeah. What is an acceptable amount of mustards to own? Um, how many? Oh, that was an um. One. One? One. Oh, you don't like One. mustard at all? I mean, I get the kind that I like. <laughs> I would say more than four mustards. Because I feel like I feel like you have your regular yellow mustard, some sort of um, what is it like the stone ground? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But like, yep, um, some sort of like honey mustard for dressings, and the solution to honey mustard is getting the mustard and getting the honey and combining them. You don't need a thing for that. I feel like there's like a fourth one that I'm thinking of. Maybe a Dijon that's not stone ground. Yes. I don't know. Anyway, and those are my mustard. Yellow mustard is awful, and and like the really but necessary. No, not at all. <laughs> Sometimes yellow mustard is the right thing because it's it's like a it's like a timeless shirt, you know. Like it's not a you don't do, you wear it all the time, but there are times when you need that particular no. flavor, no. and there it is. No, nope. nothing else replaces it. No, nope. yep. no, nope. the Dijon is fine. Dijon is fine for all purposes. Dijon does not have the edge that a, a yellow does. I don't, you know, I don't like you need that. No. Sometimes you need that. Flavor. You don't, don't want care. that like vinegary or. No. Yeah. So do you, do you like pickles, Chris? Sometimes. What's your favorite pickled food? Favorite pickled food? Uh, I don't know that I've had a ton of different types of pickled foods um, mm. besides like pickles, <laughs> pickled cucumbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh we there is uh, there's something oh no but it's just still pickles does something like kimchi count <laughs> yeah I would think probably so. yeah. yeah yeah i'm not a big fan of kimchi uh, do you eat sauerkraut chris not really sauerkraut is always on meat no sauerkraut is great as it i mean just right out well, of no, the I, ag I agree it's always it's like fine by itself but like it's always paired with some sort of meat i find mm. So the correct answer for the acceptable number of mustards is one. Four. <laughs> no, I think I, I, I left that out since it's four or more. Like, <laughs> like, like the minimum is four. I like that because that is the exact number I have right now. And it feels like it's barely enough to meet my mustard needs. Feels like confirmation. How, like how many jars of pickles is too many? I think too many Five. jars of pickles would be too many. Look at Chris's face right now. He's so, he's so upset. Five, Five does seem excessive, yeah. but... I mean, I could, I could many. definitely see the need to have five. I could the minimum would probably be two. three. I, see the I feel like two. two. You, I feel like two. You have like sweet. You have your dill. Maybe some sort of like specialty. Yeah, maybe maybe a third pickle. one where yeah yeah you get a like a the the spicy ones yeah. 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 So I was gonna say you have to have the spicy pickle in there, right? Those are or maybe just, it's like it comes down to different shapes where you have like sliced or whole or <sighs> spears. So that yes. could be your fourth. That could be your fourth. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever feel guilty about having like? sliced and speared of the same kind of pickle like i could have solved for this by buying a whole pickle and then cutting it as needed like does it seem like a little bit I mean, wasteful i don't typically have pickles in the refrigerator so i never feel guilty about that pickles yeah i haven't until we had this conversation and i thought about how many jars of pickles i've eaten where i could have just had one jar taking up space in fact i better go to my fridge and there better be pickles after this because i'm going to be very upset if there's not yeah Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.